Do you need help developing a logic to export data from the PeopleSoft application? If so, this episode is tailored for you. I will simplify exporting data from the PeopleSoft application using a file layout in easy to understand steps. I am Siva Koya, your PeopleSoft guide today. So hang on tight because we are diving into three key areas. We will start by getting our feet wet by extracting data from a single PeopleSoft table. Then we will crank things up by exporting data from multiple PeopleSoft tables having a parent-child hierarchy. Finally, as a bonus tip, I will show you how to add a header row to your file output so that external systems can understand which column each data value belongs to. As you can see, we have a lot of ground to cover. If you are ready, let's get started. Welcome back. Let's get warmed up by practicing exporting data from a single table. Here are the steps for this exercise. First, we will select a table. Next, we will create a file layout by dragging that table into our file layout. And then we will specify file format output type in our file layout properties. Finally, we will create an app engine with people code logic to filter data and to perform the actual extraction. All right. To kick things off, let me take you to my app designer. First, we have to select a table from which we will extract the data. For this exercise, we will be using the PU underscore header table. I will open definition, change the definition to record and search for PO underscore header. I will open the record and I will insert this record into my project. Next, I will create a file layout. So I will select new, select file layout from the list, click OK. Next, I'm going to drag my PO underscore header record definition onto my file layout. I will double click on my file layout properties. I will navigate to use tab. Here are the different file formats that file layout supports. I will choose the widely used CSV format. I will select the Excel format option to ensure the output file is compatible with Microsoft Excel. I will click OK and now I will save my file layout. Let's give a name to our file layout. I will click OK. I will insert this file layout into my project. Now let's move on to the last step that is creating an app engine to perform the actual extraction. I will click on new definition icon then select app engine. Click OK. I will select the step. Right click, insert action. Now I will change the action to people code. Then save my app engine. I will click OK. Now I will double click on my people code action. Next, I am going to select my file layout and drag onto my people code editor. As you can see, people tools has automatically generated boilerplate code for importing data from PeopleSoft application based on the underlying file layout. Since we want to export data out of PeopleSoft application but not importing into application, I will go ahead and delete the code that's not helpful for us. I'll go ahead and delete these two existing functions. Let me go ahead and update the comments. Instead of import, it should be export data. Now I will provide the path where I want to save my export file. I will also specify the name for our export file. Since file layout output format is CSV, I will give CSV extension here. I will use the same path and name for our log file. I will keep the existing extension. And here we are not reading the file, we are writing the file. So I'll change the mode to write. I will go ahead and delete these lines of code because this logic reads the data from a file. So I'll go ahead and delete this logic. Now let's take a step back and understand the logic that is here. The first two lines of code specifies where our export file and corresponding log file should be saved on our drive. The next line of code set file layout method applied on our export file applies file layout properties that we configured on our export file. Likewise on the log file and then create row set method applied on our export file creates an empty row set based on the records specified in our file layout. 
And lastly, the create rosette method on this record creates a standalone rosette based on the structure of this record. In the next two steps, we are going to populate this rosette with data and copy that rosette data to the file rosette data so that our export file will be filled with the data from this record in CSV format. Now I will go ahead and write the last two lines of code which completes our program. The first line I'm going to fill this row set with the data and this is where I will use fill method and here we can add filter criteria. If you want to select specific set of data from this table we can write that clause here. I will add a filter criteria here so that you understand how we can filter data before exporting data to a file. I want to pull only data that belongs to by03 business unit. I will go ahead and end my statement here. In our last line of code, I'm going to write the row set that we just filled into our export file. People tools provided a method called write row set to exactly perform that task. I will access our file object and invoke the method write row set and then input the row set that we just filled now. This is the row set that we just filled. You want to write the entire row set, not just the rows that changed. So I will use true. I'll go ahead and save my changes. Before we run the program, I need to fix a small error. For the fill, we need to use where clause for filtering data. I will save my changes. Now it's time to kick off my program. I'll go ahead and run our program. The app engine ran successfully as you can see. There are no errors and if I open the file, you can see all the data exported from PO header table that belong to business unit by 03. I hope now you are comfortable with the basics of exporting data using file layout. Now let's tune up complexity a little bit by exporting data from multiple records having parent child hierarchy in this exercise. Let me open the file layout that we created in the previous exercise. As you can see, there is only one table. Let's add a child table to it, which is PO line. I will open the PO line table. I will select the record definition and search for the record PO underscore line. I will open the record and insert this record into our current project. I will close this record definition. Now let's modify our existing file layout to include PO line. So I'm going to drag the PO line to the last field of PO header table. As you can see now, PO line is a child table under PO header. If we expand it, we will see PO line as a child. Now I will open the PO header property and here I will specify the file record ID. I will input the value 001. File record ID basically helps us to uniquely identify the row if it belongs to header or child record when we export the data. In our case, if the row starts with 001, then we know that row belongs to PO header. In the next step, I'm going to update the file record ID as 002 for PO line. Let me do that now. I will double click on the PO line record and specify file record ID as 002. I'll click OK. I'll say yes to the message. I'll go ahead and save my changes. Now I'll go ahead and open our program that we created before. I'll open the people code logic. Now I'll go ahead and drag our file layout onto my people code editor below our current logic. The only reason I dragged is to grab this line of code which contains row set framed in parent child hierarchy. I'll copy this line of code. I'll go ahead and delete the rest of the code that was generated and I will replace our existing row set with parent child row set. I'll go ahead and save my changes. I want to display child rows under each parent row. In order to do that, we have to loop through each parent row and then fill the corresponding child row. Let me paste the logic that does that. I'll go ahead and paste right here the logic that populates the child rows under each parent row. Here as you can see it is looping through each parent row set then it is accessing the child row set and it is filling the child row set based on the key values of the parent row set. In our case it is POID. I will go ahead and try to save my changes. 
we encountered an error. Looks like we need to declare the rosette. I'll go ahead and do that. Let's give it a try again. No errors this time. Let's go ahead and run our program. I'll kick off our program. Let's check out the output. If I open our output, as you can see here, PO header line is displayed first and next PO line details are displayed. If you take this example, this is the PO header line and there are three PO lines that are displayed beneath that header line. We are almost there guys, before I wrap up this video, let me quickly show you how to add a header row in our export file. Every now and then you might have a request from third party application to include a header row in our export file so that they can relate data field values to a specific column. In the interest of time, I have already written a line of code where I have captured the entire header row in a string and then used right line method of file layout to insert the header as the first row in our export file. The logic that I just showed you created this output. This is just to give you an idea and not the only way to create the header. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and sharing it so that others can benefit as well. I hope to see you in my next episode. Until then, keep learning.